this is part two of the Roof Palomino Repower. All right now, got three-wheeler all tore apart, and this is what I want. This is all I want, the wiring, the motor, and the rear axle. The rest of that stuff, maybe I could sell the parts off of it. I would keep it, but I already got two of these Honda ATCs at home. I got a 200M and a 200S. I don't need another one. So I'm gonna get rid of all that. Now I gotta bring in the Jeep and get that all stripped apart and so we can start mounting all this in there. So I'm gonna have to box all this up and make room for the Jeep. Okay, now I've brought the Jeep in from out of the shed and now I have to undo all that stuff I did a couple of years ago. But I did do a couple of things different than the original. Like I made a grill to make it look more like a Jeep. The original Palomino just had this screen in the front. But I made a grill with the ribs in it and I added these lights to make it look more like a Jeep. So I already went ahead and ripped out that 20 horse opposed twin Briggs that I was going to use instead of the crawler. And then I had a belt, centrifugal belt pulley I was going to use, but I really wasn't happy with all that. So I'm glad I changed it. That was awesome junk mower. So I went ahead and I got the Honda motor just sitting in there on some two by fours, just to kind of see where it's gonna set. And you can get a look under the hood to see how they made this back then. The firewall, they had the solenoid and stuff and all the electric back here. Now originally, the battery was right here. And the battery must have leaked over time and that's what rotted out this metal down here. That's why that's all rotted away from the battery. So another thing I did was I moved the battery box under the hood like a regular car. So I put it under here. So I'm kind of figuring what I'm going to do here as far as, you know, trying to mount this in there. The exhaust should be pretty easy. I can just cut and re-weld and bend the exhaust and make it run underneath. I don't know if I'm going to just have a single pipe or if I'm going to run it, you know, one into two to make it look like it's got duels. We'll worry about that when I get to it. And then the shifter here for low and high and reverse, I'll make up some kind of lever and maybe put it underneath here so I could reach under to switch it since it's in line. And then to shift the gears themselves, that's going to be a challenge because the shifter's over here and I want to get it to the center with a regular shift lever like you would find in a Jeep. Now let's talk about the rear end, the rear axle. So I ripped this trans axle out of some old junk tractor. This is a cast iron, good heavy duty that I was going to use. And then I had to cut all the mounts from the original hydraulic or hydrostatic Palomino transmission. And, but then I had to extend it. I had to make it longer. So what I did is I bought some couplings, some one inch keyed couplings with set screws and some one inch keyed shaft. And then I added some pillow blocks for strength. So this will work good. So this is something to remember in case you're doing a project and you need to widen the axle on something. And I just used angle iron plates and angle iron here. This axle will come out real easy. 
So now I gotta rip this out, cut all this out again that I did originally and start over from scratch. Now let's talk about the, the Honda rear end that I'm gonna put in there. So here's the rear end out of the ATC. And this is the drive shaft. This little short bugger right here. With this U-joint. So now I gotta lengthen this. So of course I went to my favorite internet source, eBay, and I bought another one of these drive shafts. I got it coming. So what I'm gonna do is, the one I got coming, I'm gonna hack this off and use this part to go off the motor. I'm gonna cut this off and add this part up there and then I'm gonna weld a piece of pipe in between it. That's what's gonna make my length. So I'll have the piece of pipe machine so it'll fit over this and then we'll have to weld it on. And then the other piece that I cut off, the one I got coming, will go in the other end of the pipe. You understand what I'm saying? You understand, you following along? And then I'll just make that piece of pipe, cut it to the length I need. Now, to extend it, I gotta add six inches from part one. Remember, I gotta make it six inches wider? Well, these are the original hubs. They're kinda welded, stamped plates. Now, luckily, I got a couple of these ATCs at home because I went home and took the wheel off my 200S, which has eight inch rims. This has got nine inch rims. So it's got a smaller hub. And it fits, same splines. So again, went to my favorite source, eBay, found a set of these hubs for a 110, an ATC 110. They're not stamped like this. They're a steel, solid steel plate with the uh, spline welded into it. So I bought a set of them used. And then, I bought some six inch diameter aluminum in, or aluminum. Six inch diameter, six and a half inches wide. Solid aluminum round bar stock. And that's what I'm gonna machine for my spacers. So I'll have it machined. I'll knock these studs out. Have it machined so it fits over this and then it'll be drilled and tapped, the aluminum, so I can put bolts in to hold that spacer to here. I'll have the center board out, so the nut and everything for the axle, you know, it'll give it some relief. So I'll be able to bolt this on. I won't have these studs in there. I'll put the aluminum on there, bolt it in from behind. And then on the front of that six inch spacer, we'll put this four and a half inch on center bolt pattern. So it'll take those existing wheels, so the wheels all look the same. And then I'll have this little lip machined on the outside of that slug, that aluminum slug that I got. So I got all that stuff coming. So I need all that stuff first before I can start securing everything because I wanna line my drive shaft up and make sure my length and everything's right and my height before I go securing this into the Palomino and before I secure the engine into the Palomino. I wanna get my drive line all, all lined up. So now I gotta figure my angle for the drive shaft and I may have to cut some of this bracing out. I may not. I wanna, I wanna kinda come underneath. I don't want that dry shaft to be in the middle of the, of the Palomino like it was originally. I wanna make it like a car. So if anything, there might be a little hump here, but I'd like to get it to come under and up at an angle. 
But I'll have to cipher all that once I get my spacers made and get my uh, rear end kind of bolted in. I think I'm just going to make a mount for the top bolt because it's only, it's only secured in two places, that rear end. So that way I can kind of swing it to get my angles right. Then I can secure it on the bottom. So there's a lot of thought that's got to go into this. We got a long way to go on this thing, so you better be patient. I don't want you in the comments, you know. When are you going to have another part? When are you going to have another part? Yeah, well, I have another part when I get to it. You know, I'm busy running a business here, too. You don't think I just want to do this full time? Make stuff? I still got to earn a living, fix stuff for people. And money just don't grow on trees. Yeah, I saw in the comments how a lot of you were saying, Oh, Terrell, oh, I can't believe you're doing that to that real Palomino. Oh, you should try to keep it original. You should do this. You should do that. Yeah, that's easier said than done. They only made about a thousand of these things. It's not like I could just go anywhere and get parts for it. There was no mower deck with it. So I'd have to find one of them. And even if I did want to put it back to original, you know, there's like, oh, oh, it's losing value because you're, you're going to be chopping it up and customizing it. Yeah, guess what else? It would have lost value on my value because what it would cost to restore this thing, I wouldn't get that money back out of it. I'm going to get money out of this because it's been terrorized. Who wouldn't want a pterodactyl original? This thing's going to be famous. Yeah, looky here. They welded this hub to the axle. So now I gotta carefully grind that and get this off. And I noticed in the comments, somebody was asking about putting those wheel spacers on there if that was gonna, you know, add stress to the axle. This axle is pretty strong. And back in the day, they used to make wheel spacers for these three wheelers. They used to make it so you could widen the axle because it would make it slide easier in the turn when you were racing. So yeah, me adding six inches with uh, aluminum, which is light, isn't gonna hurt this axle. It's gonna be fine. It ain't gonna hurt the bearings or nothing. This thing's pretty heavy duty. You wanna see some ATC that was really butchered? Take a look at this thing. This isn't mine. Somebody brought this in and I'm working on it. You know what this is? Yeah, it's a golf cart. It's a golf cart with a 200, ATC Honda 200 welded into it. Look at this monstrosity. Somebody cut the front half of the three-wheeler off and welded it into this golf cart. Then they brought it to me. They said, uh, hey, I got this uh, golf cart that put a three-wheeler engine in it, but we can't get it running. It just needs the carb clean. So he brought it up here, and guess what? It needed more than just the carb clean. When I saw this thing, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> They'd taken the motor apart and put a new piston and stuff in it. Then when they put it back together, they didn't assemble it correctly. And they kind of mashed the cam when they put the cover on top. And then it wouldn't crank over and it was locking up and uh. So I got the whole top end tore apart and I'm waiting on parts for it. I did have it running for a minute. They said they had it running and they was driving it. The guy that brought it in didn't do this. Somebody else did. He bought it from them. But of course he brought it to me and I told him, I hope you got a lot of money because I already got a lot of time wrapped up in this thing. More than I wanted. But I'll get it going. But yeah, you want to see a butchered ATC? Here's one. Welded in a golf cart. All right, I got my aluminum spacers machined and here they are. This is the end that's going to have the five bolt tractor rim on it. And this is the other end 
that the ATC hub is going to bolt to. And then my friend who machined it suggested that we just add these half inch bolts just for a little added strength. Because all we got going in here is 5 16 bolts. They were 8 millimeter metric, but I went to 5 16. And then that's cored out. Now I wanted him to core more of this material out to make them lighter, but he hadn't done that. But we have time, we could always do that at a later point. But let's just get these mounted on the rear axle and let's get the axle mounted in the Jeep. The hubs are installed, or spacers, and the original axle from hub to hub was 43 and a quarter, and that's what we got here. So my friend did a good job machining these. Now I also have the materials to do the drive shaft. Now here's the shaft that goes onto the rear axle, the original shaft. And then like I told you, I went on eBay and bought another shaft and disassembled it. And then I went and bought a piece of DOM heavy wall tubing. And we're gonna have it machined out so this will fit in one end and then get it welded up. And then we'll get the other end machined out so this will fit in there and we'll get that welded up. And then that way we'll have our universal joint on this end with a big spring in there to push against the U-joint because we gotta have a little movement. Even though everything's mounted solid, we want it to move a little bit. So we gotta allow for that. So I'll put a spring, I'll put a spring in between here and here because that's how they had it originally on the three-wheeler. So we got the materials to do that. Now this is a little long, so we're gonna have to figure out our distance and then we'll have it cut off to the right length and then everything fitted. But first, I'm gonna pull the metal off and get this old rear end out so now we could start mounting the ATC rear axle in here. extended this lawn tractor axle. This is a, a keyed coupling you could buy. It's got set screws in it and then I put pillow blocks on there to help support it. So if you're thinking about using a lawn tractor axle for something and you need to widen it, this is a good way to do it. And you got, you know, these tractor hubs are keyed. So I won't be needing this, but I'll save it for something else. Now you gotta remember, I did this probably like three or four years ago. I've had this thing for quite a while. So, it's time to start on it again. So now I gotta cut all this bracketry back off. But luckily, it's just all tacked on there. So I didn't weld it all solid. Some of this on here is from the uh, original, where the original axle mounted. This wasn't, I added this, so I can take this back off. That's just tack welded there. So time to bust out the 
grinder and start cutting this stuff off. Watch your eyes! mounted on here and what I'm going to do is take the front wheels off and take the tires off the rims and put the steel rims on the front because this thing has no suspension the only thing it's got that I-beam front end with tilts so that's a little bit of suspension but you know I wouldn't call it that so now I got to center this in the frame and then I'm going to have to center it in the wheel well and then I'm gonna have to go ahead and start figuring out you know my bracketry how I'm gonna tie it to here so that's next sliding it under there and doing all that and taking them taking them tires off them rims on the front so that way everything's at the same height I'm sitting on the ground on four steel rims. I'm not using tires, because one of the tires are a little bit different. Then it's gonna be off. So this way I can make sure everything's level. I'll move the Jeep, put it on level ground, because I got a drain in the floor here. So everything's pitched to that drain, so it's really not level in this spot. I'll move it over here to another one. But first I gotta get them tires off and get everything all set up. Okay, I got the rear axle tack mounted in. Everything's level and square and centered. So what I did is piece of inch and a half, 3 16 thick angle iron. It's some inch and a quarter flat stock, quarter inch thick. Welded me some tabs for here. And then took that same inch and a half by quarter flat stock and tack welded it to here. Now I'm using this piece of conduit just to get me close for now. And then I went ahead and hacked out that center piece, you know, so I wasn't fighting how it was going to go. So what I'll do is I'll cut these, these pieces off and then I'll weld them back in. I'll weld these back in. And I'll just eliminate this piece of angle up the center. I'll probably weld a new one on this side because I've got to have it for my shifter. But that'll come later. And then I had to allow, when I was ciphering all this, I had to allow for my fuel tank. So here's the fuel tank that went in there. Now I had sealed this because it was all nasty. But one thing I discovered is this is sticking past. And here's my rear brake. So this isn't gonna fit. So I marked it. So I'm gonna have to cut this out and weld a notch in there. So I gotta refab this tank. But it is, it is, this part is far enough where I can't get it in there once that's done. Cause that's where the tank goes. So that'll be another project in itself. So 
So everything's level, everything's square, everything's straight as far as the rear end. Now what I'm gonna do is take these steel rims off and put the two tires on that I had on there. And then we're gonna put this on and see if all my ciphering was correct. I wanna see if that wheel is centered in that wheel well. If not, then I'll have to cut all these tacks loose and then do some readjusting. But hopefully, I won't have to do that. That's why I only tack weld everything in, just in case I gotta cut it loose again. I don't wanna go sit there and weld everything in solid and just assume I got it in the right place and then find out it's not and then I gotta cut it all loose. So it's easier to tack it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Pull these rims off, put the tires on and put the back end on, see if, see if we're good. Yeah, we got lucky. Everything looks good. Looks, looks real centered in there. So that turned out well. All right, so now the next step. Have the dry shaft made, and then gonna have to pull the, uh, the cat house. I know it's called the dog house, but I got cats now, so I'm calling it cat house. Pull the cat house off, and then we can start making the mounts for the motor. Cause I got the motor just setting in there on some wooden blocks. So we'll pull all this off. This all comes off, two bolts, the whole thing comes off. And then we can uh, make sure we got the dry shaft lined up right and the angle and everything's right. And then we can start making the mounts to mount the motor down. And once we get all that done, then we can weld up everything solid. And then uh, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to put the wiring to it. And, Try to drive it a little bit, at least. Well, that's it for part two. Stay tuned for part three. And follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. We got all kinds of neat uh, Terrell apparel to wear. And as always, there's your dinner.